Hi everyone, let's take a look at number 19 on page 147. A piece of wire, 100 centimeters long, is cut into two pieces. One piece is bent to form a square, and the other piece is bent to form a circle. Determine how the wire should be cut so that the total area enclosed is a maximum, and in part B, a minimum. Step one, draw a diagram. If you think about the piece of wire, it's going to be 100 centimeters in total. So you have to break this into two parts. The first part you could call x, and the second part is going to be 100 minus x. And you want to be mindful that the entire domain is anywhere from 0 to 100 inclusive. Now, if I take the first piece, x, and I bend this into a circle, and if I take the remaining part, 100 minus x, and I bend this into a square, here's what it looks like. Remember, to find the area of a circle, you're thinking about a equal to pi r square. And if you look at the wire, x, this becomes the circumference of the circle. So again, this circumference equals the x, which equals the c. But if you think about the circumference of a circle, that's going to be pi times diameter, or 2 pi r. This means when you look at the area of the circle, instead of saying pi r squared, you can go back, we express r in terms of x, so x divided by 2 pi. And if you plug this back in, the area of this circle is going to be pi times x divided by 2 pi, the whole thing squared. Likewise, if you think about the other part of the wire, it's going to be bent into a square. By definition, if it's going to be a square, all four sides are equal. So instead of saying 100 minus x, each side is going to be 100 minus x divided by 4. This means the area equals to 100 minus x divided by 4 quantity square. Now again, are we minimizing? Are we maximizing? How do we know? So let's start with minimizing. And really, we're going to find both answers in a moment. If you want to minimize the total area, a total equals to the area of a circle, which is pi times x divided by 2 pi quantity square plus 100 minus x divided by 4 quantity square. Now, let's draw a line here. We'll compare the answers in a moment. Before you take the derivative, set it to 0 and solve for x, let's rewrite this. So this will give you pi times x squared divided by 4 pi squared plus, if you look at the denominator, 4 times 4 is going to be 16. If you expand the numerator, that's going to give you 100 times 100, which is 10,000, minus 100 times x times 2, that's 200x plus x squared. So if you collect like terms and you clean this up a little bit, in the first part, you can cross out 1 pi from the top and 1 pi from the bottom. So the total area equals to 1 divided by 4 pi times x squared. And if you expand the rest of this, I'm going to leave 10,000 over 16 on its own because when I differentiate, this will become uh, 0 minus. If you think about 200 over 16, you can divide the top and the bottom by 4. So it's going to be 50x divided by 4. Or you can even reduce this to 25 x divided by 2. So you're dividing the top and bottom by 8 plus x squared divided by 16. Now that you've expressed area as a function of x, you're going to find the derivative. You're going to set this to 0. So when you differentiate this, that's going to be 2 divided by 4 pi times x. The second term, because it's a constant, the derivative is going to be 0 minus 25 divided by 2 
plus 2x divided by 16. When you set this to 0, your goal is to solve for x. So in the first part, that's going to be x divided by 2 pi minus 25 divided by 2 plus x divided by 8. You can bring negative 25 over 2 to the left. You can factor x to the front from the right. So in brackets, it's going to be 1 divided by 2 pi plus 1 over 8. The opposite of multiplying is to divide. So you can divide both sides by 1 over 2 pi plus 1 over 8. Again, if you take your calculator and you work this out and you're rounding this to the nearest whole, x equals to approximately 44 centimeters. Now be mindful, x in the diagram represents the circle. So I'm going to write down circle next to this. And of course, 100 minus x is approximately 56 centimeters, which is a square in this case. Now, to find out if it's a max or min, what you really have to do is compare them. So by comparing the cases, you can find both the maximum and the minimum. So what you're really comparing is the y value, or in this context, the area. Now remember, this wire could go anywhere from 0 up to 100 centimeters. So as you're comparing this, there are three numbers you're focusing on. You want to find the area when x is going to be 0. You want to find the area when x is 44. You want to find the area when x is 100. So again, if you go back, what this means is if x is going to be 100, that means the entire wire is going to be bent into a square. And 100 divided by 4 is going to be 25. 25 times 25 will give you 625 centimeters square. Now, if you plug 44 back in, and again, you can take the calculator, plug it back to the uh, first line, this would give you approximately 350 centimeters square. Last but not least, if you take the entire wire and you plug it back in, this is approximately 796 centimeters square. So the smallest number is going to give you the minimum. The largest number is going to give you the maximum. So let's divide this into two different brackets. Really important you understand why this makes sense and not just you can solve it. So if you go back to the question in part A, they're asking for maximum. So maximum occurs when you take the entire wire, x, which is 100 centimeters, and you take 100 minus x, which is nothing, and you bend this into a circle. And nothing is bent to form a square. Now the reason why this makes sense, and it's probably one of the most important parts, is because if you compare the shape of a square relative to a circle, a circle has the most symmetry. So just remember, a circle has the most symmetry. And this is why it has its maximum area. Now in part B, you can find the minimum when x is approximately 44 centimeters and 100 minus x is 56 centimeters when it's formed into a circle and a square respectively. I hope this makes sense.